we have just finished doing our school work this morning and it has been so nice just to do it out here in like just under here it's been so nice and shaded and it's actually been quite windy this morning so it's just been so nice and relaxing anyway i'm about to go inside now and make myself a nice smoothie because yesterday we went out and got some like frozen mango and pineapple and also some frozen like blueberries and strawberries and loads of other things so i'm about to go in and make a smoothie Okay, it's a taste test because I've never done a mango. What was it? Mango, pineapple, and there was what's that fruit like with like papaya? Yeah, papa papaya. Pa papaya. Papaya. It sounds like a like rice or dish or something. Papaya. Wait, is it something like that? <laughs> I don't know. There's something that sounds like that. I swear. Anyway, I'm going to try it. Taste test. It's delicious. I just had some. Oh yeah. Uh -oh, That's refreshing. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a good big pineapple in my hand. Oh, it's, it's a bit bitty, but I don't mind it. I think it's nice. Yeah, but with smoothies, it's hard to get them completely smooth. I did put a bit of... Because I didn't know what to put in it. I was like, if I just blend fruit, it's going to be really, like, thick and, like, not nice. So I put some milk into it. It's delicious. Oh, it's really it's good. It's so good. Get some frozen Can mango, frozen pineapple, bit of milk, blend it. Brilliant. Mm. So good. Good morning, iFam. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day today. We're just about to head on out somewhere really somewhere that I've been looking forward to since we first arrived here in Portugal. I saw a sign for it on the way in and I was like, we have to do that. We're going to set off there in a little bit, but just before we do, I promised you guys yesterday that I would give you all an update on our schooling and what we've chosen to do and why we've chosen to do it. I did originally have like a note, a notes section in my phone of all these facts that I wanted to tell you guys and all these justifications as to why we'd done this and all the pros as to why we'd done it and the benefits to our family. But when I kept looking over them, I realized that I'm just justifying every single one of our actions and every single move that we make. And I keep telling myself I don't need to do that. And I know that even if I read out every single one of those pros and every single one of those facts, I know that we'll still be wrong <laughs> in some people's eyes. So there's completely no point in me doing that. And so instead, I'm just gonna keep it short. <laughs> probably won't be short because I don't do anything short. But basically, you guys probably know that, especially Isabel has wanted to homeschool for quite a, quite a while now, at least over a year. And I was never on board with that. Chris was more on board than I was, but I never was because I worried about things that I shouldn't have worried about. And I worried about those things due to lack of education on my part as to what homeschooling actually is. And then lockdown happened and schools closed and we had no choice but to home educate. I was shocked. Um, I, jo I joined a few homeschooling groups just because I wasn't confident in myself and what I was teaching the girls and, I, and most parents will have felt like this during lockdown. I worried like was it enough and was I setting enough work and was I pushing them too much and so I joined some home education groups to school myself up, self up basically on everything and I could not believe the amount of support and how different homeschooling was to what I'd imagined it being. I, I basically just spent a lot a lot of weeks, maybe even months, the first few months of lockdown, educating myself upon homeschooling and, and the pros and the benefits and like-minded people. The group that I was part of was just UK and there was in the region of 60,000 parents on there that all home educated their children. And I didn't know that home education was so popular. And so the more re research I did, the more comfortable I felt during lockdown at the amount of work the girls were doing was right. And then the main thing for me was the girls themselves. So I didn't see a massive difference in the work that Isabel was doing, but I did see a commitment that I didn't think I would see. So I always thought with homeschool, it would be me going, girls, come on, you have to do this. And they'd be like, two minutes, I just wanna do this. Or I'm looking at my phone or my friend's texting me. There was so much commitment that I didn't even have to intervene um, at all, especially Isabel who'd set her alarm on the morning. She still got up at the same time. She got up, she did her work. She didn't even come out of her room unless she needed help. And it was just all done really easily. And her personality seemed to come back to what it was when we were first vlogging. And I can't remember if it was me or Chris, I think it was me that said to Isabel um, one day during lockdown, during the first couple of weeks, you seem, you seem really happy or you seem happier or you seem more relaxed. And she replied, yeah, I am. I feel like I'm back to my normal self because I don't have to worry about what school friends 
will say when I go back to school. I feel like I can just be me and not have to worry about the consequences of somebody saying something mean about that when I go back to school because I'm not going back to school right now. And that really hit home. Like, it really hit home to me that school is an amazing social place for children and, and the biggest fear for me was the social side of school. But actually, it's not always best for all children. It's not the one size fits all. Um, it's not always the best place and if I felt like it was secluding my child and making my child suppress their personalities and their, their interests and they were suppressing all that just so they could be social at school that's not always a positive thing so that was the first thing and then the biggest thing for me the absolute biggest thing was Esme um, Esme isn't behind in school she's not like needing like extra tutors and things like that however in the past we have got her extra tutors in her maths but there is small areas where she used to struggle with i'm sure i don't know why she's never been tested for this or why it's never been brought up but i'm going to personally get her a test for dyslexia i don't know if she has got dyslexia um but i think some of the signs that i've seen from teaching her myself at home makes me feel like she could have dyslexia and if anybody starts saying because i've had this before i can't believe you're saying esme might have dyslexia in a vlog that's so embarrassing for her having dyslexia is not something to be ashamed about and it is not something you should be embarrassed about and it's definitely not something you should make make people feel like they have to keep that secret or it's embarrassing for anybody to find out it is not a big deal at all anyway so because of that i feel like she struggled in certain areas and i know esme got easily distracted as well in class and found it hard to concentrate i know that in areas where she did find a little bit difficult she wouldn't face that um and she was embarrassed to ask for help because in previous schools when she did ask for help she got belittled or got told to ask a friend and then a friend would be like what you don't know that um, and so she, she became embarrassed about things and because of that she wasn't learning at her full potential and she was trying really difficult to keep at the exact same level as her peers and because she was doing that she wasn't taking it in she was just rushing through everything um, and so taking the peer pressure out of it and just having that one-on-one -on -one time for me to be able to sit down with Esme and say if you don't know something that's okay you, you, you know you only know what you've been taught and you only know what you can take in and if you haven't been taught this or you haven't taken it in that's not something you've done wrong but we do need to work on those things and we can do that together I'm not great at maths I'm not like an A level Chris has got an A level in maths I don't I did rubbish in maths at school but it's never too late to learn it's never too late to educate yourself and it is not something that means that I then therefore can't help my child so me and Esme got signed up to some online resources we got some books that I felt would help her we researched things on the internet and we went over basic things that she should know um, whoa that's a big wind we went back to basics basically and I felt like Esme couldn't progress and was worrying and panicking about learning the stuff that she needs to be learning now at the start of year seven because she missed out on some of the basics in year five and six basically or even three and four and five and six I don't know hello darling so we went back to basics and we could do that without having to worry about what anybody else thought and she was comfortable in her own home and she could concentrate because it was just me and her and she wasn't embarrassed if she didn't know a question or if she, she got it wrong she wasn't embarrassed to try and I cannot tell you guys how happy I am at how much Esme learn during lockdown especially in English and maths with just like one-on-one -on -one work obviously most of you guys know that Esme and Isla went to a private school which I can't fault it's a great Isabel and Esme Isabel and Esme <laughs> Isabel and Esme went to a private school which is a brilliant school um, and I can't fault it at all and the school themselves did nothing wrong the school themselves did nothing wrong I just feel like some children get into a get into a I'm a failure mindset and feel like they're not good enough or they're not as good as other people and that's no ground to learn from at all um, it's no grounds to learn from and it's hard to concentrate when you're feeling like that about yourself and so I felt like we were spending all this money we were you know in the region of 26,000 pounds a year for Esme to not be learning at her full potential because of embarrassment or peer pressure and for Isabel to be learning but not feeling like she could be herself and not have her own personality without fear of somebody 
speaking about that at school or making her feel silly. School is amazing and we are so lucky here in the UK to have the option to send our children to a school and to learn but it's so true that school isn't for everyone and my girls have not suffered whilst being at school. Um, I'm not saying that my children are damaged because I sent them to school or anything like that. I'm just saying that I've seen a massive improvement during lockdown and it really made me and Chris sit down and have a good chat have a really good chat about what we felt were best for our children. And I'm not saying that homeschooling is going to be the best forever. We don't know. We're just starting out. It might get six months down the line and they might want to go back to school and we're on board with that. If they want to go back to school, they can go back to their schools. When we left and we deregistered the girls from the schools, we spoke to the schools and said, you know, would we be able to come back, etc, etc. So that is an option. But we are in such an incredible position to be able to do what we do for a living from anywhere in the world. We can do this anywhere. And we're not stupid and we know that that can all end at any moment. And we've got savings. We have been... We have. <laughs> what are you doing? We have been... I know lots of people say, you guys waste so much money, but we don't waste so much money. Um, we don't have massive expensive cars and we don't have mega luxuries and we don't shop designer and pretty much a huge amount of our earnings goes into savings accounts the girls have all got their own savings accounts which we put a certain amount into each month and then we have a family saving account so if YouTube did end did end the girls have all still got their own monies that they've been we've been paying into for the last four years and we've still got savings that we would be able to live off but eventually eventually those savings would run out especially if we continue traveling and doing what we like to do and then they'd be going back to work and things and our holidays and all of our adventures and our passion of traveling and being away from home would all revolve around when we can get the time off work to go and do that and I know that we'd look back on this period of time that we've had and regret not doing what we want to do just because of fear of what other people will say or having fear about how we might be judged as parents when in actual fact we've been shown over the last year it doesn't matter what we do we'll still be judged on every single aspect of our parenting so we just decided to take the plunge and go for it we've got incredible support from our friends and our families we're comfortable that we've made the right decision for our children we don't know how long that will last they might never go back to school they might want to go back to school in a month's time we don't know and we're just seeing how things go right now we're just seeing how things go there's also been quite a lot of questions about Isabel and her GCSEs Isabel is still sitting her GCSEs and she'll be doing that we're not sure there's no rule on when you have to sit your GCSEs unless you're in school and you have to sit them at 16 but you can take them early if you want to take them early or you can take them late if you want to take them late we're not sure what Isabel's going to do right now we're basically leaving that decision up to her but we are as parents encouraging her to do her GCSEs and she wants to do them because whilst life's not all around marks on a piece of paper I do feel like GCSEs are important at helping you get into colleges and things like that and I don't I do want that for the girls so Isabel is still going to be taking her GCSEs we did speak about maybe doing two this year two important ones like English and maths and then maybe some more next year when she's in year 11 but we've not fully decided on that yet um, you can take GCSEs if you're home educated you just need to pay privately for um, an external test centre actually Isabel's school does do um, external candidates for GCSEs so that's always an option for us which is good but basically that's where we're at at the moment um, like I said I had loads of stats loads of things to point out and to why this is okay that we're doing this but for the people that don't agree with it they're never gonna agree with it because they just don't like who we are as people and so they'll find fault in everything we're comfortable in our choices our girls are so much happier they'll be able to have so many more life experiences as well as learning what you'd learn in a classroom in fact I'm gonna leave a a link in the description box down below of an article that really solidified um, the homeschooling lockdown process for me when I was worrying are we doing enough it's from an ex-teacher and I do want to say before I, anybody clicks on this link I am not judging anybody for school we were schooled in school the girls went to schools um, and I'm fully on board with children going to school I'm not I'm um, saying anybody who sends their children to school are bad this is not a bad article either it just does a countdown of how much actual learning your child does at school as opposed to home educated um, so I hope no one takes offence to this article it's really good it's an interesting read it's quite short quite long quite short medium read and um, it shouldn't take too long to read it 10 minutes or so but yeah so I hope that answers everyone's questions that's probably like the full daily vlog now and um, we're gonna head out um, and go have some fun so we just drove about 20 minutes half an hour down the road Girls can probably hear me all the way in the car back. <laughs>
shouting like a moron. Anyway guys, we just arrived at Sand City. Aside from the girls' academic curriculum studies, we've been doing some side projects and one of those has been seaside science. We got this from, we got the idea to do that from a fun schooling journal and we've had so much fun doing it, learning all about like the tides, the waves, the sea, um, what makes waves, sand and all sorts of things like that and I thought this would be such a fun day out and tie in really nicely with our little seaside projects that we've been doing. So it's called Sand City and it's pretty self-explanatory but it's basically a little tour around the world basically guys, a tour around the world in sand sculptures. I am stupidly excited to go in there and see it all. I love sand sculptures anyway. I love it when you're on holiday and you walk down the harbour and there's usually like, like a busker type person. I don't know if that's the right word. Someone that makes sand sculptures and they have like a little pot with money in. So I love things like that. So this is definitely going to be amazing. We've just pulled up now and the girls and Chris are just getting sun cream on and we're about to go inside. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm at the biggest sand sculpture place in the world and I mess it up for ice. Yo, this place looks so cool. So, so cool. Anyway, entrance is up this way. So we're gonna go and see some sand sculptures. Did you know that these are the biggest sand sculptures in the world? Wow. In the world. That's cool, man. Who wouldn't be excited about being here? So have, you cool. have you fact checked that, darling? Well, no, it says on the door. Okay. Well, we're going by one. It's yeah. a sign, so, you know. Fair play. Why is that penguin eating the other penguin dead? If that's how they feed. Yeah, that's how they get fish. That's how they get fish. Learning facts. Ah. Oh my gosh, Daddy. Sorry. Learning facts. Fact checkers, mate. Even I knew that. That is so cool. The detail on that castle is amazing. Like, I have no idea how they do this sort of stuff, but that is wicked. About here, which is super cool. That is so amazing. Must how cool is that? So long to like so, must have taken long to that. Can you imagine how long it took to do the actual one? What, darling? The jungles. I mean, the jungle stuff. Like ah, oh, jungle God. animals. So cool. <laughs> so cool. But we just learned that Madonna. We didn't know this because there's a sculpture of her. Actually lives here in Portugal. Was that as of 2017? Yeah. As of 2017. I don't know if that's still the case now. As of 2017, Madonna actually lived here in Portugal. Wow, I just said, look guys, I found the BFG. <laughs> and now we're all trying to work out. Wait, I was what, inside. Th this was from a moot. Gulliver's Travels. Go Gulliver's Travels, that's it. We yeah. couldn't think of the name. They like all strap him down above yeah. the boat. Yeah. We couldn't so think cool. of the name that this was from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's Gulliver's Travels. Good. This place is literally yeah. massive. There's so much to see here. So we're just trying to work out the name, the official name on what these are. We know that they're Egyptian gods. They were Egyptian gods, yeah. I think, from what or we can work out. The guardians, out. Of, the temples, I'm not sure the guardians of the temples. I used to know those about this, but I Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's really cool though, because it gives us something to research. I love Egyptian, like. Egyptian, yeah, yeah we're going to learn all about the Egyptians. Yeah. What you found, Isla Mia cats? What have you found? Yeah. Isla's found Harry Potter. Jesus yeah. shouting there. <laughs> what is it? Comment below if you recognise these two and who they might be. Hmm. I wonder if anybody's gonna get this one wrong. That is so cool. to involve you guys in a way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to film three things 
three, three, <laughs> three things. And then you guys get to comment down below what you think the three things are. I'm gonna do an easy, a easy one and then maybe more tricky one um, and you guys get to comment down below you got to it in the correct order and don't cheat don't look at other people's answers see if you can do it yourself so the first one's quite a difficult one it's not actually a, a thing here it is it's a thing it's a thing it's a thing um, and there's a clue as well so this is the first one does anybody know what this is um, and here is your clue I'm just gonna go like this this is the clue. So comment down below iFam, see if you can guess what this is. Okay guys, here is number two for you adults. Can anyone guess who this is? Probably easy to guess on this shot. Uh, comment down below if you know who that is. Okay, next up iFam, who is this? Comment down below if you know. And then this one's quite difficult, so this is a bonus one. Comment down below if you know who this is. Okay guys, for our younger iFam, I walk back over here. I'm gonna do three for you guys to guess two. Four, so I do four then? I think I did four. Right, younger iFam. If any of you guys are watching with your parents, maybe you can get them to help. Who is this? What movie is it from? Who knows, for my younger eye fam, what this might be. This is quite difficult, but if you can see, it comes out, out, and it's relevant to somewhere that we've been as a family recently. Not this trip, but previous one. What Disney movie are these two from? And comment their names too if you know them. And then last but not least for your bonus one, what are these three insects? So you've got that one there, this one here, and this big thing here. Oh, that was so much fun guys, but this is what's calling me right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, some lollies are so good. There's a little cute play pack over here as well. Pretty cool, but yeah. Ice cold drink, that's what's calling me. Oh, uh, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm literally like, I'm so hot. Look at this. That looks amazing. So, what we've got is full juice for Isla, big massive lolly for Isabel, and Esme, and Isla. And look what I got us and Jace. Remember that? Oh, yes, me. So good. So good. Say goodbye, lick it. It's going, it's going in the buttons on it. One, <laughs> two, three. definitely recommend Sand City if anybody's ever in the area and have a, has an hour or two spare or they're at a loose end or anything like that it's really fun to walk around we're just gonna make some dinner now and oh my gosh I was just nearly coming in the caravan let me shut the window <laughs> So we're just going to make some dinner now and play some games outside as a family. So we're going to end the vlog here. I do just want to say um, before I end the vlog that I know there's going to be a lot of um, comments probably about the homeschool inside. It's absolutely okay to have a different opinion whether you send your child to school or whether you choose to homeschool your child. And it's okay to share that opinion of course um, in the comments as well. But just keep it respectful. It doesn't hurt to say your opinion in a respectful way so as to not to offend anybody. So yeah, just keep the the comment sections down below nice and respectful please I know lots of you guys will be questioning the social side of it for my children they usually go to dance and things like that they're still going to be going to dance when we go back home obviously we're traveling right now and they have constant contact with their friends on their phone I uses my phone to FaceTime her friends she's got a group of three 
four, four friends from primary school and I'm on a group chat with their mums so they do Zooms and obviously she's got Eva from New Zealand and then Isabel and Esme are always FaceTiming their friends as well and obviously when we're back at home they'll be back at sleepovers and things like that. Also I have had a lot of people, or not a lot of people, there have been a few people say things like it's not homeschooling just because you watched a movie um, about Ice Age that was back when we was in Scotland um, so also just to say that just because we don't film it that doesn't mean we're not doing it. When I'm teaching the girls and we usually do it on a morning sometimes we do it on an evening if it's really hot but we usually do it on a morning time and I spend that time with them so obviously they're not going to be concentrating on learning and learning to their full potential and taking things in at their full, pot full potential if I'm sat with a camera in their face so just because we're not filming it it doesn't mean that it's not happening we ha we actually have done some form of schooling every single day since March we don't even take off weekends because it's just fun and we just enjoy doing it and continuing to work through weekends means that if we do have a really busy day or a fun day out like Isabel's birthday which was, um, I can't even rem remember what day it was um, but if it turns out to be during the week it means that we can take that day off without having to worry and I know there's also been comments in the past about how the girls always missed so much school anyway etc etc when we did holidays so I do also want to just point, I'm just trying to answer all questions that I know might pop up just so you've got your answer here um, the girls have actually never ever ever missed a day of school work period ever if we have ever gone on traveling and they've taken like a couple of days off at the start or at the end of the holiday if we've been given an opportunity to travel of course we've taken that because it's not every day you get amazing opportunities like we've been lucky enough to get so of course we've accepted those opportunities and we've taken the work with us so they've not actually missed the, the school work even if they've not been at school they've always had the school work to do with us and it doesn't matter where you do the work a classroom a garden on holiday on a beach as long as you're doing the work that doesn't matter um, where you're doing it so they've never actually missed days of school despite what some people think and just again just to say we believe that this is the definitely the best the best decision for us for us right now especially the girls if there's ever any a subject or a piece of maths that they're struggling with we know that in mainstream school they have like a set time frame to do that do that piece of work do that subject and then after that time frame's done they move on to the next whether every single child in that classroom's grasped it or not whereas with homeschool I just think we can spend a little bit more time making sure um, the foundations are built basically and making sure that they've properly got it and properly grasped everything about that concept and things like that before we move on to the next topic um, and I think that's going to work really well with with my girls anyway enough justifying that's what we're doing we we hope you guys can be respectful in the comments and uh, we, we are always open to reading your um, opinions and things like that as long as they're said in a respectful way and they're not said in a way to ridicule or belittle anybody not just us anybody who chooses to homeschool and that's it for today guys I'm gonna go now make some nice dinner play some games and have a nice chilled evening and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Good night guys. Mm.